Let's test. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Yar. Um, today we're gonna draw a dog, a little puppy dog, my friend's dog. I thought that the picture was cute. I like to use um friends pictures or uh pictures I take instead of finding pictures off the internet because sometimes they're copyrighted um which means that it's illegal to use them without their permission but if they're a picture of your own or even a picture that your friend shares with you um as long as there's nothing personal on it it's a great thing to draw uh, and use for drawing practice so my friend's dog named Paisley. She has a beautiful coat of black and white. And I thought today I would do a drawing video where I draw. You know what? I'm just realizing I forgot my glasses. I'll grab those in a second. But I'm going to do with black and white so that you can at home draw with a pencil, draw with a marker. Um, I like a pencil. Um, because, because you can get darker and lighter shades of gray instead of just right, one shade of black. So grab a pencil. I'm going to go grab my glasses. I'll be right back. Now that you see I was barefoot, <laughs> I'm in my own house, you know. Okay. All right. These off. So the first thing to do when drawing anything is to get the big shapes first, then get smaller and smaller and smaller into the details, into the fur and the, the dots of her. Uh, or uh, whiskers, or fingernails, all that kind of thing. Um. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, and then, so what's the biggest shape? Um, sometimes I like to start with the shape of the dog, but sometimes I like to start with the shape of the floor. So I'm going to look at this picture. The, hmm, I think. The left side, where um, his tail's coming out, her tail's coming out. I think that area is where I'm going to start. So I've got, no, yeah, actually, I've got a white piece of paper to do gray on. But I kind of want to go this and kind of gray my paper out. So we'd like to do this at home with a pencil, um, you could pause the video and slowly kind of rub your pencil back and forth kind of with this motion and don't and put it at an angle. You can kind of get some pencil on real roughly and then use maybe your finger paper towel and kind of move it around. That's one option. Make your paper more gray. It takes a little bit of work though and a little bit of patience. But the, the good thing about put, making your picture, your um, paper a little bit gray is that you can use an eraser to get like lighter colors. So there's on this dog, there's a lot of white and a lot of black, but then a lot of gray in the middle. So if I tone my paper to a middle gray, why do we hear it twice? Oh, thank you for... Why do you twice? I know. Go capture. You know? Let me know if you don't hear it twice anymore. I actually have no idea why you would hear it twice. 
guess I can check. No. Okay. I think I fixed it. If it was being funky. Anyways. So let's go back to erase everything. Dip, 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 dip. Now I've got kind of a grayer screen than I had before. Now this is where I'm going to start doing, doing this dog's tail. OK, sound is fine here. So on uh, Thursday, I'm going to do a first Zoom art class, by the way, where, uh, where I'll do it in Zoom so we can talk to each other a little bit, a little bit better. But for now, I'm going to draw the tail coming out of the side. So I kind of. Sometimes I'll use my pencil like a a level or something and hold it like this. And then I'll hold it up to the picture I'm trying to draw and see like, okay, is it does it go left and right exactly or is it a little bit tilted this way? A little bit tilted this way. It looks like the tail's pretty much going left to right exactly, maybe with a little hump in the middle. So I'm gonna do left to right exactly with a little hump in the middle. Then I'm going to. Good to hear that you fixed it. Picking up that tail. That's pretty good. Now I'm going to try to do. This is with no detail. Now I'm going to try to do the curve of her back from um, just below her tail to up near her ear. And so again, I can hold my pencil up, and it looks like it goes straight down from the tail pretty much. But above the tail, it's at an angle, kind of like this angle. Like that. And the so uh, how far up you go, so you can kind of eyeball it, or directly measure like how thick the tail is. That looks like the same thickness of the tail. I should go down that distance. Uh, so I'm going to erase a little bit. Yeah. OK, now up, up here is where the, I'm just going to mark where the ear is. I think I, I started a little bit too high up for the size I'm drawing them. So I'm actually going to. Dust this, which is probably something that you can't do on a paper, but now I'm going to kind of follow the foot around left. I know the foot is white, so I'm actually going to look at the black areas of the foot and not the white. So there's kind of a sharp line going down this way. This. That. So I just kind of followed that shape of the black. Now I'm going to fill it in. Even though there's white hair on it, I can use my eraser to get that later. Look at it. This is kind of a funky shape. Might be hard to see exactly what I'm doing, but it, it'll, it'll come to life pretty soon. So now I'm going to maybe follow through the top of the head. So where the ear is, I'm going to do that dark line I see coming up here. Olive's watching a show. Right now, this is the ear coming up. Still running into the top of my screen here. <clears throat> I like to use really big pieces of paper when I draw. Right now, I'm I'm drawing on the iPad, but when I draw on big pieces of paper, I can give myself room on either side in case I start something too big. You can always cut the paper. 
after you finish the drawing and cut it into whatever shape that you want. I like to collect frames, thrift stores, and friends. And then when I draw a picture on a big piece of paper, I can cut it to the size of a frame I already have instead of having to fit a frame. My art usually buy the frame first, fit the art to the frame. Way to do it a little cheaper, maybe. As I'm talking, I, I was kind of drawing the top of um, the head of the dog here. Now I want to kind of uh, get that the shape of the uh, eye. I think I overshot it a little bit. Um, I'm just gonna erase. I kind of overshot eye hole here. So now I can this shape and it comes down this this was a request to do a dog from oh asked a couple times for me to do a puppy dog i thought today oh that would be a dog yeah now i'm doing those uh the black areas where his where her eyes are Trying to get that shape. I'm missing it a little bit, but it's always a race. Then the nose. Curious. Once I get most of the parts in, it'll be easier to kind of adjust and see what where I went wrong. And now I can tell that I, I just screw the nose a little bit to the right too far. So what you can do is kind of use, get a red just to show you. When I draw things like this ear, oops, uh, like this ear line here in red. <laughs> um, then I can use that as kind of a ruler to say like, okay, the line of this, the bottom of the black of the eye needs to be like that. I can use that as a ruler to kind of tell me that the nose should be around here. And you start to get more lines on your drawing, you can use them as reference for something else. So maybe while I'm drawing the tail, I would be looking at, I don't know, um, the line of the mouth here and how that those are kind of the same angle so forth so that's kind of what's going through my head when I draw is looking at other pieces that I've already drawn that I'm comparing also a measurement process fun it's it's like a puzzle reminds me of if you've ever done a crossword puzzle or the doku or something how the more pieces you get to it, the more clues you start getting. So the same thing with drawing. Let's see. That, I think I, he, it looks like I don't have enough white above his nose, so I'm gonna go ahead and erase some of that black that I already did. Or like that, maybe. Yeah. I think I sort of, while I talk, got a little distracted and didn't follow my own rule of uh, doing the big shapes first. See almost why it's... It makes it a little more difficult for me because I have to adjust things even though I are Cool, that's been okay though. Um, let's make it a little darker where her eyes are. Okay, now I'm gonna follow the rest of the of the body just to get everything in. 
So in order to do that, I do smaller again. And now let's see. So I've got the collar in. Now I need to do maybe that shape of his shadow under under his belly. That's what I'll go next. Kind of ignoring that leaf for now. This approach to drawing where I'm kind of filling in the darks and lights is almost more like paint in a way. There's a name for it. Oroskiro. Or it's the CH. I just think. But basically that means um, light and dark. And you just focus on the light and the dark areas. Almost as if you were a camera taking a picture. You wouldn't draw all the little lines necessarily. Just and it actually it really helps if you squirt, squint your eyes or if you have really strong glasses. You could take glasses off and you see it really blurry. Um, because then you can only see the dark, you know, big shapes of dark and light. That's actually a really good tip for, uh, for learning how to draw like this or see like this. So just squint your eyes and look at this. Okay. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah? <laughs> what was that saying? Uh, what's what's the show called? Ah, uh, Olive's watching a show with a cat. Sarah. Oh, is that right? Oh yeah. That sounds like fun, Olive. All right, I gotta I gotta keep talking to the people watching me draw. Okay. So I'm just cleaning up the ear here, um, using my eraser, going kind of back and forth. It helps if at first, especially if you're using pencil. If you draw a little lightly so that it's easy to erase, then uh, then as you've got your marks in in the right place, then you can start to go erase some there. Lighter fur, I can always check. Cool. That. I'm using a really kind of big, big marker stylus thing, which is a little bit difficult to get details, but it kind of helps to use a bigger, bigger than you think you need. Because then you can't do, you won't get caught up in doing. I'm changing the shape of like the diamonds around his eyes right now because it. I think that's a very personal thing to this dog is shapes of the diamonds. In order to get his personality right, I need to get those diamonds shape, as well as that kind of white shape on his head. Now, up. That. That. 
kind of measure the angle of each of these eye things with my pencil. And once you once you get good at it, uh, seeing the angle, you won't have to hold your pencil up so much. You'll just visualize it. But we need to remember to to do that. All right, he's looking pretty good. At, le at least the shapes dark and light. I can even, even hold it up exactly to where. Um, there's being his right cheek. Okay. And so it looks like maybe I went a little bit too narrow on the face. I'll actually move that ear out a little bit. Good to get all the structural problems, which means like how it looks out of the way first. And you don't have to set, you don't have to wait until it looks perfect to move on. You can just until you're happy with it. Once you think I'm happy with how this is looking, the shapes looks like a dog. This looks like the dog I'm trying to draw. Here at that point. For me, right now, pretty close. Out. Looks too small to me. Um, his mouth, mouth or uh, snout looks a little bit too small to me. So look, look at the picture. I can see on the picture, let me get red, that the level of the ears, this ear here, is much higher than the nose, but I've drawn it at the same level. If you look at the picture of the dog, the level of the ear um, actually kind of lines up with the diamond eye. So I should bring the diamond to the eye down, and then the, the nose should be maybe down here. So with those changes in mind, here I go. Black. So I need to bring the diamonds, the diamonds down to the same, or maybe a little bit lower even. That. Down. Then those I can way down to feel like starting here now okay and that's gonna size about right like that <clears throat> wow, and then I have to move. Looking like I'm going to move a lot of different tail. Going to be a little bit lower, even though that's the thing I started with. Ah, uh, oh well. Some days, I find the my measurements are pretty good right off the bat, and then some days you try, and it's like, whoa, how, how do I get practicing? Part of being, being an artist is being critical of yourself. I think that's a good part of being a good person, looking critically at the things that you're doing wrong, admit to them, see it, then you own it. You're very good at this, but that's okay. Learn, I can get better at it. Down this nose. Okay, and then redraw that mouth so vertically. Bottom.
Okay. Something of that. It's looking a little bit better. Now let me hold it up to the dog. Yeah, a little better. So I'm measuring the left side. That looks good. It looks like maybe got too skinny. So one thing I can do as a shortcut now, just so I have time, right? I could just uh, stretch it. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stretch it a little bit. And hi. Got a. That's one of the benefits of digital drawing is move the drawing around in ways that you might not be able. To. But it's actually better if you're a student and you're learning how to draw. Better to not be able to not make the shortcuts and just deal with whatever level you're. But all right, here we go. Now check his. Belly here. I keep calling it. Girl dog. Oh, now looking at the black area again of on his right shoulder, so on my left, I need to reshape that bit. That. That. And now it looks like he has really tiny feet. So I think once I get these feet in, I think that's going to be a really good, really good start to a drawing. One thing when you're trying to do something kind of realistic. It's not like you can uh, quickly in 20 minutes or so draw perfect picture. A lot of good art comes after hours and hours, days. I think the Mona Lisa took like five years or something. Certainly a long, long time. It wasn't in one sitting or been within a here, so that gave me some hope as far as uh as taking my time with my art and not being frustrated if it doesn't look finished for one sitting. All right. Eventually I have to settle with something. Yeah, I think that's looking good. So now that I've got that, I can actually go to white. So this would be with your eraser. Now is the time you can kind of, especially if you've got your paper gray, you can go in and see how I can get white in there. I'm going to look at the areas of white and really concentrate on those. Those. The right shape. Kind of uh, like you're concentrating on a different thing for almost like for different layers of, I think of my drawings or paintings in layers. Like I just did the first layer, now I'm on my second layer where I'm working with the whites and really concentrating on the white areas. Piece. And then after this, I'll probably focus back on the dark areas and I'll go back and forth a few times until I feel 
I don't feel that now. I don't feel like it's done. It's not worked it quite. On in a row. Under his mouth now. To go into that mouth a little bit. I don't know why I always default to call in this case. Boy. See. Because I've always had boy dogs my whole life. World dog, except for, for a very short amount of time. My mom just. Oh. Now, looking at where the eyes sit and um, I think where I have the darkest dark there is a little bit too. I'm going to actually carve out where I think the eye should be and I, I, knowing that I'm going to get it back really dark, I just want those in there. There. <laughs> it looks kind of funny white. <laughs> oh, so I can write the show behind it. Alright, so here we go. And the puppies, uh, I should get that, uh, a little bit of white on the tail too, huh? But kind of actually further out, so I'm actually gonna have to get some black in there, fill in the rest of it. Um, white of the foot, white of the foot down here. But on the other. But, but actually, now that I look at it, it should uh, oops should dip below the below the belt a little bit. There, that way. So now, now that I look at the the front paws on the uh, his left paw, her left paw, and my right paw um, has lighter white around the side and then it's darker towards under the dog so I'm actually only going to do the white on the right side under the toes yeah. that would be with your eraser or if you're working with paint even you would white paint on top of the gray so I'm going to kind of follow that same rule on the other side, but not exactly. Following what I when you try to when you draw from learning from what what you're looking at, so like uh, don't do don't make things up in your head about how to draw make a dog, but actually look at a dog and draw it. You learn so much more about how. Something's put together. You need to, you'll you'll learn to draw much faster than if you were just if you practice drawing a dog a hundred times without looking at one. You probably would make less progress than drawing the dog twice while looking at them. So I think about that a lot when I'm figuring out you know, how to use my time wisely learning. To draw. I would I consider myself a student of art. And I want to get better as quick as possible. So what I've figured out is I just draw things that I have pictures of. Even better, draw things in real life, and that will get you better at drawing in no time. So I'm gonna darken the darkest area of the eye, which is kind of the top where the shadow is, and then keep. A little light. Yeah. So you can see, I didn't do much detail in the eye at all. I'm just kind of trying to get the 
the levels of dark and light correct. Now, moving back to the darks, since I did a, a layer of white, now I'm kind of thinking of my next layer of darks. So I'm darkening up the ear. Uh, darkening up maybe the right side of the ear. Okay, now my, moving over to the other side of the face. I want to darken up under the ear. And that bottom side. And then, actually, I want to extract with the white again a little bit downward. I want to do like. Again, fixing a mistake that I did. So I need to actually fix that eye again. There. Better? <laughs> My um, drawing doesn't quite have the, the smiley, doesn't quite look like the picture, how it looks like she's smiling. So I want to, I want to try to achieve that before the end of the hour here. Well, cause I, I'm liking the drawing so far. I think it's a good level of detail. Um, but. Now I'm actually going to go to a dark gray. So this would be, you could use a harder pencil, or you could use, uh, you know, just less pressure on your drawing. But this is going to be somewhere between um, the black and the background color I have. So I'm looking around for places that aren't quite black, but are a little bit darker than that. Kind of. Moving that around. And this includes part of the ground around him. Because I need to start thinking about how to incorporate him a little bit, at least, into the background. Okay, let's see, a little bit darker. I'm even using light pressure, too. Not too much. Overdue. And okay, now on the face, it looks like around his mouth is it's a little bit darker around his lip. Get that her lip. Michael. Better. I'm doing my best. Okay. And under the Oop, under the mouth. I don't want to go too dark there, so I'm actually going to wait on that one. Um, above his eyes, on his head, not quite black up there. Like white's coming through. Same on his ear. I'm going to that on the ear. Um, around his eye a little bit. Same kind of business. Just lightening up some of those areas I might have done a little bit too dark. This is very subtle. All right. Looks good. Um, I'm going to go back to white and fix this. Uh, he looks like. Now I'm going to hold up again. Put my iPad to. I still think I kind of made him a little bit too skinny. So again, I'm going to use this freeform and spread him out just a hair. That would be a little bit too much, so I want to go lead just a little. <laughs> oh, that, that thick. Just enough, I think. All right. Sharpen up his nose. I can see that it kind of does this thing. I'm going to sharpen up that. Hmm. There we go. Something like that. <laughs> um. Fix up that right edge. I might have won a little. Cool. Now I think is the time for me to. Uh, well, actually, I'm going to do a light gray first before I, before I speak anymore. So this is going to be a little bit darker than the background. Um, but it's going to be where I put the colors that aren't quite white. 
So a little bit under his mouth, because I wanted that to be a little darker. Again, around his nose a little bit. Right side of his face and the ear at the top. And let's see where else. Around the toes. Bottom. Right side, maybe, of the... Uh, how about that leash, too? Yeah. That's looking pretty good, huh? Um, I could do a race. The shape of this. Let's look more. All right, cool. All right, so now that I've got kind of the general it looks like pretty pretty close to done, I would say. I'm going to switch to a much smaller brush. I don't know how small this can get. Let's see. Okay, yeah, so that'll allow me to do the fine little details, like the eyes. I think that's probably somewhere I should focus right now. So right now I'm going to do the shape of the that little lightest part of the eye. It's going to be kind of not, I shouldn't make it white actually, I should just make it kind of a dimmer gray. Because white will, it'll pop it up too much. It, it actually, in actuality is white, but it's in shadow, so it's gonna look much darker than white. Okay, and then same with kind of this reflection coming around on his eyes on both sides, oops. Um, Yeah, that just a little bit goes a long way. I can actually go a little bit lighter for these reflective areas. And this, what this is, is there must be light in the room or maybe a sun in the sky. And that light is reflecting off of his eyes. So already you can see how that's given a lot of life to the eyes. Now I'm going to try to lighten up the circle iris it, that's the colored part of the eye rather um there we go uh, i think that already has a much glassier look to it and so i'm just gonna leave that now um i'm gonna focus on the nose because that looks like another kind of expressive area so i'm gonna take my smaller and do the bottom of the holes of the nose have a little bit of light reflecting off of them. You can see, at least, especially this one on the left, but a little bit on the right. But I want to be careful not to make that right one. Maybe actually I'll just do black to get the hole above it. Oh, there we go. I think just that little amount really helps. Um, now I'm going to sharpen up the edge of the nose. Sharpen up the edge is what I mean by that is just use a, the black with the smaller brush to get it kind of uh, go from black to white less gradually. I want to go right from left. Uh -oh. and around a little bit. Now those uh, those little dots where her uh, 
whiskers are coming out. I'm just going to tap, tap, tap with my pencil. Tap, tap, tap. And tap, 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 maybe a little bit above and a little bit on the left side too. Tap, 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 tap. Did a little bit too much on the left. I think. Cool. Let's see. The shape of the um, fur going over her collar. Go like this to kind of get that spiky shape of the fur. And I'm not drawing, notice how I'm not drawing the white, I'm actually doing the black into the white and that'll make it look like the white's coming out. Kind of a opposite day or something. Do, do the opposite of what you mean, but it still works. Do the same thing on the background, which I might. Now I'm gonna go down to the feet and get those toes in there. The, the dark parts between the toes. One, I know another one here. Then it's maybe not so dark along the left side. Oops. On the left side. There go. Um and the other side. Shadow under as well. And this front paw now, and oops, I want to overdo it. One that way, then there's one line here, and then there's kind of right. Um, <clears throat> what's going on with this actual? Uh, a leash. I'm going to try to get a little bit of that shape of the latch thing. Um, not concentrate too much on it because it's the dog that we really want to highlight here. Uh, now the toe of this. I don't want to forget this foot. That paw's looking a little bit large. So what I'll do is go back to this color and a bigger thing and just carve right into that. This. There we go. Got that paw a little bit fixed up. I think that's a little better. I'm noticing there's an area of dark fur um, down here that I quite get right. So I'm gonna do that now. This little little bit that right there, and then foot. Come All right. Hey, that's looking pretty good. Got 10 minutes left. I think maybe a good thing to do now would be to add a little bit <clears throat> to the background. Now I want her to pop out from the background a little bit. So in order to do that, I think the white area should be look a little brighter. In order to make the light areas brighter, I should make the background a little darker. So instead of doing the shortcut, I'm going to just use a big brush paint over the background. This see where that gets us. Uh, I want to be careful not to uh, color over the lines too much here. I want to 
But I do want to use big, broad strokes because I think that looks better than than fussing around too much. There. I'm using a, a pencil, a digital pencil that's supposed to look like oil pastels. I just like, uh, I've been using oil pastels re recently. Um, and I just like the texture. Um, so let's see. Now I can see there's all these little, whatever the picture is taken was, I'm guessing maybe some kind of cement, but it has all these kind of lines going like this. I wanna reflect that a little bit. After I tighten up some of these edges around the dog. Oops. I'll lose that. So I tighten up all around the dog a little bit. That means looking at the subject still. I'm not just looking at my drawing. I do want to still, even at this point, Fix little errors that I've made earlier in my drawing. Um, there's some that I have to kind of live with, but there's others I can still continue to adjust. Area I kind of and just like with the belt, I can kind of influence the texture. Oh, I'm seeing. Clean up the top edge. See how I'm. I'm just keep doing layers. This is actually what I've really been enjoying about charcoal drawing is that it's similar to this. I can keep erasing. So if you ever get a chance to pick up some charcoal, it's a little bit messy, but it's very cheap and uh, and it's fun because you can do this and you keep layering and you can keep erasing over and over without messing up your, uh, your paper. Um, I just discovered how kind of fun it is. I need to make this tail a little bit bushier. Something like that. <laughs> Looking pretty good. What do you think? It's it's a little pretty cute. It's the spirit of the dog pretty well. Um, he's very sweet. This is again. This is my friend's dog. I my friend lives. Um, he used to be my next door neighbor growing up, but now he lives in Southern California. And he just got engaged. That's I'm, uh... Ooh, that sounds good. I got pasta after this class. Now I'm going to do a little bit more detail on this. Definitely don't want blue. I want a little bit more detail on the bell or uh, collar here or leash. Down like this. I do want to sharpen up this bottom edge. Because that is a that's an area that's not furry. Like uh the rest of them's furry, so I kinda like this jagged look, but there is areas of not fur, so like this actually around the bottom of his eye coming up. Zoom into it, but a sharper line along the bottom side and along the top. So you can see how that. Oh my gosh! I feel like it's looking at me. But the just the simple little little details can make your eyes, especially or anything, really life. Got a few minutes. I'm so excited Ginger told me. 
that you just made pasta and it smells so good. It smells a lot of garlic. Didn't have a big breakfast. Boy, am I excited. So excited. Keep messing around. And I'm also excited to share this drawing with my friend after I've done it um, because I meant it just as a lesson, but the cool thing about art is when you practice it, you have a finished piece at the end. Um, when I practice music, um, I don't necessarily have something to show for it. I'm a little bit better at music, but just get a little bit better every drawing, not too much better. You do hundreds and hundreds of drawings to get really good. But the cool thing about it is after you're finished, you have a piece that you can give to a family member or a friend or whatever you want. So I've really been thinking about that recently and in the spirit of helping others and being kind, I think it's fun to, when I'm practicing, practice on something that you that maybe I could also gift. Get two things done at once. Especially if it's a surprise, I think. Surprises are one of the most fun things to do. Parties, gifts. So, Buddy, maybe you could surprise with your art. Something to think about. Um, right now, I'm kind of just like I could keep going forever, doing little tiny details and adjusting them back and forth, and we're getting too much closer to the end. So I probably should stop here. But hey. What do you think? I think uh, it was pretty successful. Paisley, the dog. Maybe I should write her name in here. Um, uh, let's see. Hmm. I don't have great handwriting, so I don't want to mess this up. But Paisley, P A I, I think. S O B and make it a little bit darker. Uh -huh. Cool. I probably will get rid of this when I send it to him. But cool thing that I wanted to do that for was now uh, if I go to this is just a fun thing we can watch here I'll make it uh make it full up, up, up. um I can watch what we just did for an hour I can watch in seconds so time lapse replay let's see what has happened me messing around with the shades, starting with the tail. Oop, moved it over. And this is like fast motion drawing. Mm -hmm. uh, showing you about angles. Uh, and I'm just kind of molding. Oh, and at this speed, it kind of feel, it looks like molding with clay or something. Um, I'm just molding the dog's shapes of lights and darks around. Pushing them left and right, down and up, until I'm happy with the shape. <laughs> you can see I really did a lot of molding with this guy. And now I'm adding the white, what I call the second layer on top. Those funny buggy eyes. And now adding a little bit more around. It, making the eyes more lifelike. Or I think there's like 15 seconds, then I'll sign off here. Add in the background and cleaning it up a little bit more. Boom, 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 boom. 
once the letters start. There we go. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed. Hope you have a good one. On Thursday, I'm going to do a Zoom art class. So that would be more fun because we can talk to each other and, and I'll pick something a little bit easier and we can do it together. All right. So I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day.